Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of Microsoft Power Night. Yeah, you might be wondering, it is Power Night, but why are we doing it during the day? Well, depending on time zone, it is daytime in Nigeria, but nighttime in other places. And besides, with a lot of, you know, creating an atmosphere where people, you know, you can wake up during the night and join others to learn because we believe your day is always occupied. By the way, we might change the name later, but let's go back to what we have for today. A very interesting edition where you're going to learn a lot. So I'm going to wait for a few seconds while we encourage others to join. And during this period, I'm going to do a countdown. All right, thank you. Um, see you soon. All right, welcome everyone to another edition of Microsoft Power Night. I want to encourage you right now to share this link, like this video, and also share with friends and colleagues that you believe we definitely benefit from this. By the way, this is not our usual background. I'm testing the green screen feature in the software that I'm using, and I hope the image is not too distorted. We have something very interesting to do today, and I'm going to share my screen shortly all right one of the use cases that we're going to consider today is how do you create a microsoft form and give people outside the organization opportunity to upload files this is the major, major limitation that we often face when creating forms on microsoft form we want to create enough people outside the organization sort of you know upload files alongside i'm going to note that the issue has been solved by microsoft so today, Form still doesn't have the option for you to upload file if you are no, if you are not on that tenant. But we are going to find a way around it. Thank you. In case you are just joining us, I want to say thank you for joining us on Microsoft Power Night. Either on YouTube, either on LinkedIn, either on Twitter. Just go ahead and send an emoji or send location where you are joining us from, just to encourage us. And right now, I'm going to proceed and share my screen so that we can move to what we have for today. Great. Okay, so we want to consider a use case and the use case is simply, how do you create a form, Microsoft form, and allow people outside the organization to fill the form as well as upload items, upload file, PDF or whatever format you want them to upload the file. So before that, I have a very good news for you. I have told people that I send message to my personal people that I have something interesting to report about my progress and what it is. I want to say thank you. Yeah, I want to say thank you because in the space of five months, our YouTube channel, this particular YouTube channel has grown 1,000 subscribers. It is not easy, especially in a niche like this that is not entertaining and where you have to, which is not even, you know, as known as others. I project that in the next three years, there's going to be a huge demand for knowledge and resources in this Microsoft Power platform ecosystem. But for now, we sort of, you know, coming up and encouraging people to see. So it is not easy when it is not a known niche. And you see about to this. And that is why I hold all the thanks to you. Thank you for believing in this vision. Thank you for supporting every effort, you know, being committed to creating learning content on this channel. 
Having said, I'm actually happy that in the space of five months we could gross this. Some people were here to support, even though they do not understand fully, but they believe that what we are doing is really resourceful and is impactful. All right. Having said that, what do we have for today? We know the title already, but I'm going to create a use case that will help us to better appreciate how you can make use of this learning. I have a synopsis here, which is Microsoft form has actually come, you know, can come very handy since the global pandemic. Organization can now digitize data collection from hard copy form to Microsoft forms. And I want to also add this, that early 2020, there was a projection that the world generated 32 yottabyte of data. And out of this 32 yottabyte, only 11 yottabyte was analyzed, leaving us with 21 yottabyte of data not analyzed. And that's called data gap. One of the disadvantages or one of the reasons why we're having this data gap, remember for every data gap, it means lying there are solutions to problems. There are solutions to growth in organization. There are solutions to fixing market friction in the economy. So why are we having such a huge gap? Only find data. Not only because we have lack of the skill for data analysis, for better guru analysis, there's always a job for you. So not only because we have um, um, lower, you know, smaller amount of people who can analyze, data is being generated as an exponential rate. But also that the data that we generate today, they are often generated in a form that does not make them suit for analysis. Take for example. I've been to organizations before where I just have to fill my name in a logbook every time I check in and check out. And I know you can also relate as well. So here is a, here is a scenario. Years before that time, these organizations have been keeping logbooks. If today, if we go back and say, where are the logbooks? What we found out is many of them are taught, tall, you know, burnt, incomplete, lost, and you know, you've just lost those information. You are not making any sense from them. And at the same time, even the recent one, they are not making any sense from them because they are not digitized. What if you have a button you click on or a power apps that you click on to check in and data get drops on SharePoint? Interestingly, on SharePoint list today, now you can just click on the button that we analyze, you know, into, you click on an integrate button, it will show you Power, power BI. If you have Power BI license, once you click on Power BI, it will automatically create dashboard for that data. You don't even have to go there. You don't have to start creating. It will create, it's a new feature that was released about two weeks ago. So you see that the form, the mode through which you collect information matters. And this is why one of our mission is to show people how you can digitize data collection. It makes room for a lot, there are a lot of advantage there. Having said that, a lot of people have adopted this, you know, using form to replace manual processes, using form to replace uh, the physical art copy form that they often administer to customers or people outside the organization, even within the organization. And the road uh, roadblock that often being faced is Whenever you create a form and you want people outside the organization to fill this form, you just, and you need them to upload items, they won't be able to upload because that feature will not work. And that often cause um, some issues. Okay, so this is what we want to address today. By the way, I'm going to be checking your comments, especially on YouTube, and make sure I respond to them. So if you have any question, any comment, please feel free to post it. What are the solution components? One of our approach to solving challenge or showing video, we have a lot of videos on this YouTube channel. But one thing that makes Microsoft Power Night different is because it's a live event. We make mistakes, we learn together. You see how we approach to solve the problem. Unlike the video I've posted, sometimes I've tried it two, three times, you know, made mistake and go back again. I only upload the perfect one. But here we learn how to create the solution from scratch. So how do we think about it? What are the solution components? What are the things we're going to use today? Because the use case we'll be presenting here is application and assessment solution. How do we create an application and assessment solution? Uh, I'm going to assume Capacity Nigeria, which actually I'm a co-founder of Capacity Nigeria, that we're doing recruiting, we are recruiting for new employee. And we just, we don't have an HR solution that can do that for us. And neither do we want to pay any third party to do that. Can't we also manage and use what we have? That is the question. 
So we're going to use Microsoft form to create the application form. And how do we get the CV from this applicant? And after the applicant have, filled, have submitted their CV, how do we get the link for them to write the assessment? How do we mark? How do we score? How do we manage all these things? We will do that together in this session. All right. So what are the components? First, we're going to use Microsoft form to create application form. We're also going to use the form to create assessment form. I'm just going to be very fast. So the form will be five questions. OneDrive, this is very handy. We're going to create a link to upload files to a dedicated folder in OneDrive. And also one that will help us to also store those files, the file uploaded. SharePoint will collect the form details. SharePoint will also have a colon to confirm if the CV has been uploaded. By the way, Microsoft Power Automate is going to help us to populate SharePoint with the responses from forms. It's also going to help us to engage applicant with link to upload file. It's going to also engage applicant with link to start the assessment. You know, all these things, we'll do that together. I hope you are excited. And in case you have questions, like I said before, I'm willing to, I'm just going to go straight to the comment section and check if there are any uh, comments, otherwise we'll proceed. I'm going to share uh, my desktop this time around. So I'm going to share another screen. I'm this time sharing my desktop so we can go all the way. Okay, so right now I'm sharing my desktop and I believe you can see it. I'm on Microsoft Portal. So which is our office portal where you can navigate to any part of the form like you want. I also have my OneDrive open there for me. I have something else, which is office admin, Microsoft 365 admin center. There's a reason why I opened this. In case you are not admin, you need an admin account before you can do this, this particular thing that I want to show you. But I believe by default, it should be turned on for your organization. What am I saying here? is first let's go to onedrive when you go to your onedrive this is my onedrive i click on any folder i've clicked on this folder microsoft teams chat file you will see there's a, an option here request files depending on the policy in your organization you might not have it there so how do you get it turned on by the admin also in case you, it is often advised, if your organization does not have Office 365 and you don't even have access to all these things, I have a video on my YouTube channel, right on this channel, where you can create a free Microsoft E5 license for one year, you know, and you have access to all these features, the premium features, but they are for learning purposes. So take your time to go through this um, channel, the videos on my channel to, to, to learn that. And by the way, when this life edition is done, I'm going to edit the video and upload the link so that at this same point in time, you can see the link up there and click on it to to to, to check that video and create your own E5 license. So right now I can see request files, but if the request file is not there on yours, how do you turn it on? You have to go to the admin center. How do I get to that admin center? So let me even close the two windows that I have. From this one drive, you can click on this waffle button and you will locate admin. It's because I'm an admin, I'm using my Office 365 uh, developer account. That's why I can have this button here called admin. So I've clicked on admin now. It's loading, but let me open um, OneDrive again. I don't want it to override it. So the admin center is loading right now and it's done loading. I'm actually not doing this thing directly from admin center. So there are other admin centers. That's why you can see admin centers right here. We have the security admin center. We have compliance, endpoint, Azure, exchange. We have SharePoint. We have Teams. But I'm interested in SharePoint admin center. So I'm going to click on SharePoint. So this will just take me to dedicated admin center for SharePoint. What am I trying to do here? I want to show you how to set it so that your OneDrive can allow you to request for request files for people outside your organization. Under this, I'm going to go to policies. And on that policies go to sharing. Right now, is big, you can see SharePoint. So it's possible SharePoint most of the time is most permissive because by default, SharePoint is for sharing. Why OneDrive is private, it's for you. So most of the time you will see that your OneDrive might be here, meaning it's only people within your organization that you can request files from. Or sometimes guests that has been registering your AD or new and existing guests, but for you to you know enjoy and have it for everyone, choose anyone 
move this button to anyone and save. Once you save, you can see now, once you, because it's already there before, if I change it, I'll be able to save. So once you save, then you're good to go. And you can see right here, the links, they can view, edit, and upload. And that's what we, we actually want them to be able to upload files. Once you save, then your OneDrive will be able to have, when you click on any folder, oops, sorry, I'm going back to files. When you click here on any folder, you will see request files. So for this purpose, I'm going to create a folder, new folder. I'm going to call it application, applicant, let me call it applicant CV. I want to request for applicant CV. I'm going to click on create. So we are building the solution right now. We created a folder that will allow us to collect applicant CV. And I'm going to click here. And when I click on that run button to check it, I'm going to see request files. And I'll click on request files. It will bring up this. What files are you requesting? So when, when they get the link to fill, they will see the name of that folder. I'm going to call it again. Applicant CV. I'll click on next. So this is the link. Is it that you want to send to specific people? But in this case, we want to send to as many people as registered for, you know, to, uh, as applied to Capacity Nigeria to become an employee. So I'm going to just copy the link. What is happening here, they can upload, but they cannot view and be editing what is there. So and that's the advantage of this feature. So I'm going to click on done. Like I also said, we don't know when Microsoft will allow people to upload files directly from Microsoft form, but that shouldn't stop you. That shouldn't steep, uh, um, slow down what you want to do. You should be creative around it, especially when you want to achieve something without spending money and without engaging a standard party. And that's what we are doing here. So I have the link copied. The next thing to do is, remember, we need to go to SharePoint to create the backend. Because when people apply for the form, for the opening, I just want them to be able to uh, all the information to be dropped on that SharePoint list. I'm going to go on my SharePoint team site called training. And this is my SharePoint team site training. I'm going to create a new list. I'm on the home page now, new, and I'll create a list. Let me confirm if there are no questions first. Okay, thank you, Olaide. Thank you. I can see joining us from LinkedIn. Right, so I'm creating a new list. And right here, I'm going to click on blank list because I want to create from scratch. I can call my list applicant CV. If you need more details about these things, a lot of these resources are on my ship, on my YouTube channel. How to SharePoint for beginners, how to create lists, how to maneuver Power Automate with lists, with Microsoft Form. Of course, we're going to put that to use case here. I'm going to click on create. What I'm doing here, list is synonymous to uh, a database. It is not a database, but more, you know, improved for storing data. You can actually use as a data storage. And right here for non-programmers, instead of you going back to SQL, we don't want to do that. Let's go ahead and use our SharePoint list. By default, you're going to have a title column. I'm going to have a few more columns about that person. And one of it is single line of test. I'm building the backend. For every solution, build the backend and build the frontend using Microsoft Form. So I'm Instead of writing employee name, I'm going to put applicant name. So it's also advisable to not to leave space in case you want to reuse those variable in Power Automate expression or in Power Apps. It's going to insert special character that might not be even be nice to, to work with. So I'm just going to use Kame case. Applicant name, A for applicant in capital letter, N for name in capital letter, but merge them together. That's called Kame case. So I'm going to save. The next is the email, applicant email. Okay, of course, we shouldn't leave space. Applicant email. And let's say education. I just get um, IS education. Yes, education. I'm going to click and save. Um, yeah, single line of test. Let's say date of birth date of birth, want to collect date of birth as well. I'm making date of birth um, single line of test as against date and time, because even when you create a date time um, table, uh, feed option on Microsoft form, 
when you are moving it to SharePoint list, it will not be passed as date and time. And I don't want to bog us with all this creating expression to manipulate it. So let's put it as text, single line of text. When we move it there, it's just going to be the same date. But if you make it date and time, it will not be seen as a date and time uh, value. So that might cause some conflict. So let's just make date and time, a uh, date of birth rather as a single line of test and gender. Gender should be choice, but I will create those on my form. I'm just going to go straight and um, make this single line of test here. Gender, what other same things should we collect? I mean, uh, it doesn't really matter. We are recruiting for, okay, that university, I want to keep it simple. So let's hold on to this. We'll get other details from the CV. All right. The next thing to do is to go ahead and create my Microsoft form. Uh, we click here to this file button and load Microsoft form from there. I'm also going to call it Capacity Nigeria Application Form. So new form. It's loading. Please feel free to ask a question, you know, show expression in case we have one or two things that is not clear. I'll be checking it frequently so that I can be sure I capture your questions alongside. All right, so this is going to be capacity. Nigeria recruitment. Let me just call it recruitment. By the way, Capacity Nigeria is an initiative. I'm a co-founder. We are committed. It's an NGO. We are committed to uh, digital literacy across Africa, you know, helping us to cover the skill gap. If Africa's population is the largest or the best resources that we are yet to utilize, to refine that resources, you need to empower them with the right skill so that they can be more valuable. And that's actually what we are committed to doing. And thank you for supporting us. You are supporting us through this channel. You are supporting us through, you know, sharing and liking our content. All right. So Capacity Nigeria Recruitment. Let me create my form. And remember the questions we have there. The first is name. So I'm going to call it full name. I'm making it required. Create another feed and open it up and say email, email address. I want to be specific. I had a subtitle. Please enter a valid email address. Let me zoom a bit so that I can see. Right. Let's go to choice and say gender. For gender, I'm going to say female and I'm sorry, I'm male. So we're fine with that. I want it to be a drop down. So I'm going to click on make drop down, not just a button to select. What are the things? Highest education. Let's make a choice as well. Um, highest level of education. The minimum we can take, I'm just going to make a BSc. B, let's call it, um, okay, let's call it a first degree rather than BSc. How about uh, Bachelor in Education and Engineering? First degree, let's have Master. Master's degree, do you have master's degree? Or do you have you know, PhD? Yeah, of course, we might still want to apply. So let's give room for that. It is not easy in the country to, to get job these days. So also, I'm going to make this as well a drop down. What other feed do we have on our SharePoint list? Date of birth. All right. So let's come back here and create another one. And I'm going to call this date. I call it date of birth. And we need that maybe to be able to screen. So this is in date format, but like I said, when it's being passed to from Power Automate to SharePoint, it will not be passed as date format feed. So that will cause a conflict, except we are writing expression to actually convert it. I don't want us to uh, deal with that for now. That is why I created an equivalent feed on SharePoint list, but put it as a single line of text as against date and time. All right, so I have this, and let's just quickly format our form, you know, make it beautiful. This is team. I have interesting teams here. Which one? Wow. Okay, so Microsoft is actually testing this team idea. Okay. They are testing this team feature here, which you can see here. Um, because I'm putting recruitment, I guess that is why these team ideas are coming. By default, you might see all these things there for yourself. Um, uh, yeah, because of recruitment, I can see all the images and background there are, you know, are close to something relating to office and recruitment. Apologies for booking you. <laughs> Okay, what should I use? Let me use this. I think, I think I like this. All right, so I have it. Let's preview and see how our form looks like. Okay, okay, this is fine. But before, okay, I also want to 
had some experience to my phone. I always advise that you had experience. So let them let me have the session. I'm going to break it down and click add session. And I'm going to type click next to proceed. I'm going to add a new session and I want to break the other one to the next session. New session. Okay. Your details. All this, your details. Now that I've added two sessions, this will break them into two pages. From this um, click next to proceed, I want to add an image. I've, I've designed some images, which are on my, I often advise as well, this is my PowerPoint. I use PowerPoint to design this application form. So you can see that I actually use PowerPoint to do these things. And I've exported them to my OneDrive. So I'm going to insert one of the images on my OneDrive. I'll be able to see that image here, okay? This is the first one. I'm going to click on add. So I have it added now and started just to build the experience. It's worth it. Even though you are not a programmer, you can make use of what you have to deliver something really nice. Okay, so this is this. And by the time they are filling at uh, this session, I call it your details. I also want to add something there. I want to add an image. And this image should be about something interesting that we invest in an employee just to encourage you to continue to you know put forward your application so i have this and i think i'm done so i'm going to view it now let's preview wow awesome so there's something here that is not showing that's the clickness to proceed i've observed that most of these new teams the header is there i wrote it there but the team does not it just make it faint so if it's going to disturb us, I'm just going to go straight and use anyone that I like so that we don't get disturbed. I'm going to use this. If I use this, it will not definitely have that issue. You can see now the click next to proceed is working. This program is not bad as well. So when you click next, you can see the details. We support your growth. We invest in our employees and see them growing every day. We just craft a Microsoft um, certification badge. So these are the details that we have all required interesting all right so how do we share our form i'm going to click on share but make sure that anyone can respond and not only people in your organization now that i've done that i can even shorten the link to the form so my form is ready yes and by the way the folder we are not adding a fee to upload file here so maybe i should just show you why if i add a new question type and i make it upload you know, the upload is not even working now because I have set my share mode to anyone can respond. But when I put it back on people, uh, only people in my organization, and I click on him, and I want to upload, you see it is possible. So we, this form is not for people within my organization. It's for people outside. And we can't add an upload feed. And that is the major challenge. Let me check if there are any questions at this point. All right, no question. Thank you. So I have my form, I have my field. I'm just going to go to Power Automate now. I will create a new flow. And this is going to be an automated cloud flow. Automated because the trigger is whenever someone fill that application form. I'm going to use this as a trigger when a new response is submitted. Then I'm still going to call it application application solution let's just call it application you can name it anything i'm going to create the goal here is to get every details free by that person and populate the sharepoint list so if this is the trigger which form should i use to trigger this i think capacity nigeria recruitment form so we're going to use this now this will get triggered anytime someone feel that capacity nigeria recruitment form but when it comes to the next step which is the actions the first thing to do is get response details. I want to collect the details the person filled. So get response details. Um, to specify which of the form as well should I get the response detail from, despite the fact that it's been triggered from another form. ID here, I'm going to say response ID. Response ID is coming from this trigger. So whoever get it triggered, the ID that got it triggered is the same ID I should follow up with and collect those responses from. Okay, the next step is let's populate our SharePoint list. So we're going to search for create item. So this create item action will help us to populate SharePoint feed. Okay. Honestly, there are a lot of things you can do here. 
And because of time, we'll move faster. So I'm going to training. Something just came to my mind now, applicant CV. So that's the form. You know, this feed called title is by default feed there. You, instead of just adding an applicant, a response ID, which I'm going to do now, you can create a custom application ID. You know, a dynamic one that is, you know, depending maybe um, applicant slash, you know, the date, the year slash, the role slash, the unique ID, which is coming from the response ID. To learn how to do that, I have a video as well on my YouTube channel, how to create a custom column, custom column on custom ID columns on SharePoint list. You're going to see that. So let's go ahead. And that's the interesting thing about Power Automate. Now that we're using this action card, what I have right here is called dynamic content. And it used the concept of balance brought forward. <laughs> I don't know accounting, but I just know we are bringing something down. What that means is every actions above the particular action you are working on, any variable that is re reusable, you'll be able to see them here. And that's the concept. So I have two actions here. When a new response is submitted and get response details. And this is why this heading is get response details. And these are the things I can reuse from there. This is another one. When a new response is submitted, this is the only I, um, item I can use from there. When I move to the next action card, you see there will be item to reuse from this create item SharePoint list as well. So let's go ahead. Applicant name, full name is what we need. We're just mapping them here. That the full name on the Microsoft form, fill it up in the feed that I've created on my SharePoint list called applicant name. For email, I'm, I'm going to click on email address. Microsoft Form has a feed by default, which is called Responders Email. This will not be applicable once your form is being filled by people outside the organization because they cannot detect their email automatically. But if your form is being filled by people within your organization and you set the form to only people in my organization can fill the form, automatically it's going to create, it's going to collect their email for you. So there's no need to create a feed for uh, put your email or put your name. And you can use that email to retrieve their name from Office 365. IS education, IS level of education, date of birth, I'm, I'm going to see date of birth. How about the gender, I'm going to see gender. All right, that's fine. So this is going to create it for us. But is that end? No. I need these people to submit their CV. I need them to approve what is required. Okay. So interestingly, I was, you know, using one action card and then realized that this can actually help me solve this challenge. And I tried it out and it worked. Then we have this live show today. Let's go back to our form and click here on settings, on our settings. And we might want to set when the form should be on, the start date. Yeah, it should be on by 12.45. I should be done by that time. Let's see. Okay, 12.30 is already on. And let's set the end date. Okay, we are letting people know that this form will close soon. And when is it closing? Mm, let, let it close by Friday. All right. Maybe same time, maybe midnight. So we can actually set those date and time. It's closing Friday, 11.45. Of course, you can edit, okay, you can edit to say maybe 59. Say, okay, midnight. Do you want to show progress by? Yeah, but let's customize thank you message. That's what I'm going to. Your response was submitted. Please check your email for the next line of action. So I can list them here. Sorry, next line of action. I can then maybe want to list them here. One, two, we be required to click a link to upload your CV. Two. Upon uploading your CV, go back to the mail. Yeah, go back to the mail and click the done button. Why are we doing this? We want to monitor the process, be sure that this person has truly submitted. Click the done button. Okay, then you will get a link to take a time assessment after clicking the done button. Notes. 
you will be disqualified if you click <clears throat> the done button without uploading your CV first. All right. Is it going to be functional? Is it the best? What if there is a feed on Microsoft form to upload CV? We will save ourselves this stress. But the thing here is this. You can always find a way through these things. A functional thing. Would this be functional? Yes. A lot of people are going to apply. So adhere to this instruction. All right. So now that I have this, in case you want them to be able to save their responses as a PDF, to have a PDF copy of the application. So click on this button. Allow receipt of responses after submission. It will allow them to print the form they filled. All right. Now that we are done customizing this, let's go back to our Power Automate. To Power Automate. And I'm going to add an action card called send an email with option. Send an email with option. Uh, the approval card, there's an action card called send and wait for approval. It will not work. For people outside the organization so we will have used that to you know send something to them and wait till they take the action and click on approve or reject or whatever options but because these are people outside the organization they send an email with options a very good use case yeah that's an actionable email what this will do is when you receive the email you will see a button to click to act on that email to move on to the next line of action who am i sending this to the email the email i'm going to click on add dynamic content and you see this create item has appeared and these are the feed that we can reuse from create item of course i can also click on more you can click on more to see all the feeds that cannot be reused from that sharepoint list but remember we are not using that of sharepoint list i prefer to use the one from um the form email address it's still the same thing but just click on the one from email address then subject kindly upload your cv choices these are the choices so what are that's the action button that we see i'm going to the, turn this to done and send the so, second one to answer application this one to cancel the application so I'm, i only need these two choices you can delete the third one if you have more than two three four just put comma and type the the options so right here under show advanced options do i need anything do i want to send it as importance you know this kind of mission not be missed out in the spam box or the rest uh, okay add that test for the email body i want to say check click done button yeah let's say click done button after uploading cv click your don't click the done button after uploading cv what is the body of that mail i can say i i mentioned the name of that person because i want to personalize it i am going to click on full name and put a comma and say you are required to do what you are required to submit upload rather your cv you are to upload your CV. Finally, finally, click on the link here. All right, where's the link? <laughs> Don't forget, the link is right there in our OneDrive. We had copied the link by clicking on require request files. I've copied the link on my clipboard. So back here, let me paste. Let me use my clipboard and see where the link is. Uh, this is my SharePoint. Okay, I think this is it. Mm, yep. Yeah, this is the link to upload your CV. Very long link, but you can use, you can actually use um, maybe BITL to convert this link. Take, for example, it, so that we don't just have long link. The options as well uses, this an anime option uses a sort of markdown thing that if you can write embed link in markdown, it will appear as a link. But maybe I don't want to bog it down with that as well. I've logged into my B, bit uh, uh, bit account. Then I can click on create and just paste the link here. 
when I click on it, it's just going to create a shorting link. I can put capacity in a ERC N and say upload CV. So I, I believe this is available. All right, that's done. It's available. So instead of me having this very long link, I can just bring it down after this HTTPS, say bit.ly slash cn upload CV. So this is it. So I have the content selection test, edit test for users options. Okay, I think this is what I actually need for edit test for user action. And here, um, please click the link to upload your CV. You're going to see how this thing will work out. Don't forget to save your flow. I'm done here. Uh, okay, so there's something that I need to also show you. Show HTML confirmation. This thing will be rendered as HTML, so use only HTML message. And um, show HTML confirmation dialog. I'm going to say yes. So when you click on done, you're going to open up a dialog box and have to confirm that you are saying done. So not just you mistakenly click on done or mistakenly click on cancel application. Let us save. One interesting thing about this particular action card is that once you're done, it will not move on to the next action until that person has clicked on that done button. So that is the interesting thing there. So you cannot assume the person has, the person cannot go ahead and start taking the assessment unless the person has clicked on done, meaning the person has uploaded the CV. So this action card will wait. This send an email with option will wait until the person click on done or cancel application <laughs> for every you know run attempt. So what other thing can you do? Want to do now? Uh, when the person respond, I want to capture the response. So I'm going to add a condition. Mm, yeah, I need to add a condition. And right here, I want to selected option. That's the condition I'm adding. Selected option. So is the selected option equals to done? Remember, we have done and cancel application. If it's equals to done. So let me update my SharePoint list. Yeah, let me save as well. Interestingly, our SharePoint list, do we have the decision? So we don't. So let's call it CV status. Let's just, it's going to be uploaded or not uploaded. So let's call it CV status. So this column will tell us, we'll be able to know if the person has uploaded the CV or not. On the back to my flow, now that I've created this, I need to refresh my flow so that I can capture that changes from SharePoint uh, list. Let me check if there are any question. Okay, Blitzer, nice. Thank you, Luato Sin. Thank you. By the way, this, uh, the background I'm using, I hope is a nice one. Mm, I'm trying the green screen effect on the software. So I'm refreshing now and I see how the application felt. Okay. So don't be surprised. Sometimes when you're building much of flow, you refresh your flow and you just see that everything disappeared. No, you've not lost your progress as far as you make sure you saved it. So just go back to my flows and click OK here. You will see the application state solution. Just click on edit and you will return back to your flow. All right. OK, so back to condition. When the selected option is done, then let me update that SharePoint list. So I'm going to click on update. I'm going to search rather update item. Then I will see an action card, which is from SharePoint, update item. Select the SharePoint site. My site is training. And the list is applicant CV. It's going to show me the columns, the ID. ID is a unique feed. It's called one of the metadata that is created whenever you create a SharePoint list. And ID is also unique, it's for tracking that particular item. So we don't want to update someone else's status. We want to update the person that we are still talking about, the ID that got the form triggered. So that's why you should just click on the created ID. That's the ID that followed it. The title, I shouldn't make it, by default, the title is always compulsory. So you can turn it off. But because it's compulsory, even though I'm not updating the title, I have to fill something here. So I'm just, I'm just going to go up, go back to my response ID, because that is actually the value there, put it back there. And on that CV status, say, I'm going to type CV uploaded, CV uploaded. So I, I have to replicate same thing here, but this time around, application cancel. So, so let me 
copy by using this copy to clipboard and come back to action here and then go to clipboard and paste so that i'm not replicating this thing so it's there right now all i just need to do is to change the status to um, application cancelled by applicant so we know the application was cancelled by applicant and that's the hand for that person um maybe not the end you might want to send a person message so but for this person that has successfully you know uploaded the, the cv and we've updated the record that the cv done you want to send out another email send email with option uh, you know, you can always customize and determine how this thing works based on your processes. But I'm creating something for Capacity Nigeria. Why am I sending email with option? I want to send the person the link to take the assessment. And when you are done taking the assessment, make sure you click on done again. Assessment completed. Something like that. All right. So who am I sending this to? Is still that same email. So which is the email address? Subjects. Time, the time based assessment. So, what what are the choices that I want to have there? Uh, I just want to have completed, completed. Let, let me put it completed, not something long. Um, yeah, I just need completed. So, just need completed. If you don't action on it. By a particular date and time, you can get cancelled. Just click on completed. Show options. I also want to make sure that the HTML is yes. Confirmation and use HTML to render it. And edit test the body. Yeah. I call the person as well by name. Let me just search for full name. We're already having more actions now that I have to be scrolling down. Okay. Please find the link. To your timed assessment below. Where is the assessment? We've not created it. When done, when done, come back to this mail and click on the done. Click on done button regards the reason why i'm leaving this more space is it might join all this text together because it's, i think it's using markdown so let's just leave this more space so that at least two space can be maybe at least one space i'm going to put double space because double space sometimes is also for a new line for a markdown all right where's the question if we've not created it but right now let me just say and when i'm done okay Okay, let's just save here. You can keep on expanding on this flow. And I want to agree, you want to agree with me that you can create an assessment form now and embed the link here so that they can click on the link to take it. And once you know how this works, definitely uh, understand it. So let me check if there are any questions for now. No question, um, thank you. So let's get back and run this flow. I want to run the flow. And how do we get the flow to run? by filling the form. So I want to fill this form. I'm going to click on preview. I'll, I'll be using my Gmail account to do that. So let me click preview to fill the form. So preview will allow me to fill the form. I'll click on next. What's my full name? Ola Charles, that's my name. What's the email address? My Gmail, OZ at gmail.com. Gender, you can see it's a drop down drop down thing, um, mail, highest level of education, go ahead, first degree, date of birth, I'm going to, of course, of course, you know, that's not my date of birth, so we have to put something there, okay, well, this, yeah, so inserted, I'm going to click on submit, when I click on submit, you see, there's instruction here, all the things that are stated, they're here, print or get PDF of answers, I can click here to get the PDF of my responses and save. If I go back to my email, but let's go back to flow and let me click on this back button. The flow should start running right now. So the flow is running. Let's check it and see the status. 
Interesting. Flow ran. It has created the item on SharePoint. It has sent email to me and is waiting for me to action on the mail. When I go back to SharePoint list, you see it has been submitted. The details submitted. But CV status, we don't have it yet. So let me go back to my email and see if I've received any uh, new email. Oh, I can see that here, Ola Charles. But that's the account that I'm using to create this flow. So kindly upload your CV. Wow. And it's important. So I'll click on it. Do you see? Oh, you can see now, even though I'm pressing enter, it is still sort of put everything on a single line. That's fine. That's why you should limit what you put there in terms of information. I, Ola Charles, you are required to upload your CV. Kindly click on the link here. Click done button after uploading your CV. You know, click on the link. Um, I'm afraid the link might want to take me in as Ola Charles. I'm definitely going to. Uh, no, no, no. Because this, I'm already signed into my office account. So it's not, uh, uh, I'm going to click here. I'm going to copy the link. I'm going to copy this link and open an incognito window browser. Let me open an incognito browser so that at least uh, it's not logging for anyone so that I can see that. So I click the link. It's going to access my one drive, but this is a general folder. Nobody is logged in. You can see nobody is logged in. And Ola Charles, that's the name of the person. So if you are using an account that is General maybe Capacity Nigeria a service account, you know, say uh, uh, Capacity Nigeria is requesting files for applicant CV. I'm going to select files and I will go to my desktop and just select one PDF file. I don't have it. I'm going to select travel memo and open. So I'm going to put my name. I'm required to put my name. Ola Rewaju. Okay, that's my name. In case I want to add more files, I can upload if it is required and click on upload. So it's uploading that PDF. So it's done. Hey, Ola Raju, Iboke, your upload was successful. So it's done. We will let Ola Charles know that you upload that you uploaded files. And when I go back to my flow, I of course you can click on done now, but let me show you how the flow is. Right now, the flow is running because I've not clicked on done. But if I go to my OneDrive folder, do I truly have a file in this applicant CV? Yes, the file is here. And interestingly, for the file, you can see online Waju Oyiboke. That's the name of the person, and that is the title of the uh, file that was uploaded. Travel payment memo. Guest contributor. A few seconds ago. So I can go back to my email and say, done. When I click on done, remember we have said it should confirm my option. So it's saying that, do you want to confirm your option and send this response back to the sender? <laughs> back to sender. So I'm going to click on confirm done. So I click on confirm done. Thank you, your response done. I'll be successfully registered. You see, another email, I'm going to get another email, but let's see our flow. Our flow is going to progress. It is done now, we send an email with option. And because I click on done, it has said, that, okay, truly the guy click on done. It has updated my SharePoint list. Where's the SharePoint? Uh, let me go back to SharePoint. You can see CV uploaded. You can see now CV uploaded. And um, back to my email. Is it back to my email? Let's go back to the flow. You see, it, it has sent another thing to me. Who is awaiting my response? And when I go back to my email, I will see your time-based assessment. Oh, this time-based assessment. I can say, here, Ola Charles, please find the link to your time-based assessment below. When done, come back to this mail and click on done button, done button. Regards. Select one of the options below to respond. Completed. I didn't have the link here. But the objective here is to show you that using that option in the flow, we allow you to collect file. And another interesting thing is you can set a power automate flow that whenever a new file is uploaded to this particular folder, SharePoint folder, the file should be uploaded to the SharePoint list. You can attach the file to your SharePoint list, this particular list, or, or at least the document library of this SharePoint. Of, and you can add it to the SharePoint list folder. So you can easily go there on this same SharePoint, inside the document uh, folder, you can see all the CVs of these people, and you can see the applicant details. And from there, you can search, you know, this is the name of the property, just search for the CV. 
there are many crazy things you can do. But the objective here is that we've been able to send out a form and allow the people to upload file without even breaking any rule. And that is the objective of this uh, Power Night session. All right. In case you have question, I am willing to take your question now. Maybe there are one or two questions to ask. We're actually done. More or less, don't also forget to you know, like and subscribe to this YouTube channel because we'll be doing more of this event going forward. So I believe you've been able to see how this works. In case there are no questions, I can see that there are no questions. You can always come back. This video is recorded. You can check it on YouTube. And if you're on LinkedIn as well, you will definitely see it on my timeline. I will be posting and sharing it. Okay. Remember, we did not complete it, the entire experience. You can create another form and have your questions or use Microsoft quiz, then embed the link to that last email. So there, people can then click on the link and fill the email uh, and take the assessment. When they are done, they go back to them and click on done. And you can automate another process to send them thank you. It has been recorded successfully. But, you know, looking forward to hear from us, maybe for the interview session. Right. Thank you. Um, if you said so this was powerful, um, I'm happy you find it powerful. And you can see a lot of use cases you know, within your organization, any process might not even be now, you know, at one point or the other, you then they find this useful. And that is why I thought of sharing it, you know, on my channel. Thank you, everyone. And I think we are done on that and how. I'm, I'm very happy and do have a great day. And happy Democracy Day to Nigeria because we're having the break today. Bye for now.